Lord, you are everything I hope for. You are everything I need. More than I could ever ask. More than I could even think. You are higher than every mountain. You are wider than every sea. Just your voice was all creation. Yet you love someone like me. There is no like you. None so faithful and true. Ruler of my heart. You are.
Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. You can do better than that. He's our great provider. You are everything that we need. You are everything that we need. And since you are everything we need, we trust in you to provide everything that we need. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Welcome to Dove Church. We thank you for tuning in, for listening. We thank you for the in-person worshipers, and we thank God for your continued support to this ministry and your love and your messages and your comments to us. Keep praying for us and believing for us, and we thank God that he will in turn, well, we believe God that he will in turn give it to you, press down, shaking together, good measure, and it will run forth. And we just trust God over that word to you today. Amen? Well, as usual, what pastor is going to do for the next few weeks is ask you to, to work out of your paper Bible, not the iPhone, not the pad, but your paper Bible if you can. You know, bring it, because sometimes we get out of practice using this word right here. Amen. And so, so make sure that you, 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 you have a paper Bible. Uh, the two scripture areas will probably be Acts the 16th chapter and then 1 Corinthians the 16th chapter. And so if you mark yourself with those, then uh, you can stay right in one and then follow me along in the message. Amen? And so the, the words aren't going to come overhead, so sometimes we get a little, little comfortable uh, just looking up. But I want you to get comfortable flipping. Amen? Amen. Amen. Repeating after me, lift your Bible up or wherever it is. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for what you are sovereignly supplying to your people today. Food, bread for living, spiritually and naturally. God, so we come against every warring thing that wants to stop the word from going forth with clarity and understanding. And we, we decree that it is an understood and received word in Jesus' name. And now, God, we thank you that faith does come when we hear. When we hear, we have faith to believe. So now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said together, amen. We're going to talk from the subject today, when the Holy Spirit says no. When the Holy Spirit says no. And again, when the Holy Spirit says no. No is a nasty two-letter word. We don't like to hear it. Especially when we want to hear a yes. So to hear no bothers us. As a parent, one of the most aggravating things that a toddler can do when they finally learn to say a few words, they learn that word first. They don't learn yes. They say no, 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 no. And keep doing what they want to do. And so. I came to tell you all no's aren't bad. Sometime a no will save your life. Sometimes a no will save your finances. Sometime a no 
will save your family. And so the Holy Spirit says no. From time to time, it says no. Not always, but it says no. Let's go to Acts 16, 6 through 8. And we're going to talk about Paul on one of his missionary journeys getting ready to, I believe this is the first one, getting ready to go to different provinces and parts of the world to preach the gospel as a sent apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Acts 16, 6 through 8, when you have it, say amen. I'm going to wait on you. I'm not going to run off because I know they're not coming overhead. But Acts 16, 6 through 8, when you have it, say amen. All right. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden. Everybody say forbidden. forbidden. By the Holy Spirit. Forbidden by who? Holy to preach the word in Asia. That's a powerful statement. Somebody that was sent to preach was told not to preach. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. So they couldn't go to Asia Minor, and they couldn't go to Bithynia, but they landed in Troas. Everybody say Troas. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After strengthening the church in the region where they were, Paul sought to go next to southwest toward the important city of Ephesus, which was in Asia Minor. But Paul, again, was, according to our text, was forbidden and told not to go there and preach. And that's odd because it seems like the Holy Spirit stopped Paul from doing something that was good, preaching. But the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. Everything has its own time. Everything has its own time. Yet the Spirit of God was directing his work over and over again. The Holy Spirit knows what God wants to do. The Holy Spirit knows that. And so sometimes when you're prevented from doing stuff, the first thing that raises up is your flesh that wants to do it. And, and, and that's when the battle starts. I'm warring. You're warring with what you were told not to do because you said it's okay for me to do it. So if Paul had a sat down and did a running list, I had an encounter with you on the Damascus Road. You sent me to preach. You changed my whole pro, uh, 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 job description from, from hunter and persecutor of Christian to, to preaching about that same Jesus that I was persecuting people for. And now that I'm doing it, you tell me don't do it. The reason is God knows what he wants and he knows when he wants it. Even though it's your call, it's his mission. It's his mission. It is difficult to say Exactly how the spirit said no to maybe it was a prophetic word or whatever it was, an inward speaking of the Holy Spirit. One way or another, Paul and his company got the message. But this Asia that is mentioned here was not the Asia that you think of. It was Asia Minor in the European areas of the world, not Asia as far as China, Japan, Korea, and all those nations. 
And so he was told, don't go there. Because in that city where Paul wanted to go, in Asia Minor was a city known as Ephesus. Ephesus is in the Bible. We have a book named Ephesians. This was a city Paul wanted to visit. Paul wanted to visit and minister there. He wanted to go there. And he thought because he was called to preach, he could go when he wanted to go. But Ephesus and Asia Minor, even though they were told here in Acts, the 16th chapter, not to go, as I was studying, I read, at some point, Paul, however, did make it to Asia Minor. We're going we're gonna to run there, and then we're going to talk about his purpose in not going at first. 1 Corinthians 16, 5 through 9. Turn there. 1 Corinthians 16, 5 through 9. How do we know that? We have the witness of his visit in Scripture. How do we know he made it to Ephesus? How do we know he made it to Asia Minor? We have the witness in scripture. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia. For I am passing through Macedonia. And it may be that I will remain or even spend the winter with you. Are you all there? That you may send me on my journey wherever I go. See when Paul went to preach places. They gave an offering to him so he could continue to preach. I like that. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you if the Lord permits. See, already Paul is getting the message. God may not permit it and I can't do it. I'm saying that, but if he permits me to do it and not prevents me. That's how you need to operate. If the Lord will, we will do this or that. Because the Lord don't always permit you to do everything. You ought to get happy about that. He's really trying to save your life in the process. Amen. Amen. He don't don't permit you to get mad and, and, and knock your boss's block off. That might help you in the moment, but in the long haul, it won't be good. Oh, okay. All right. Reading some more. That you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way. But I hope to stay a while with you if the Lord permits. But I will tarry in, what's the next name? In Ephesus. Did he make it to Ephesus? I will tarry in Ephesus until until Pentecost. Wow. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. He's saying, even for my next assignment, the Holy Spirit said no to this one at first. Now I'm here, but a door over in Macedonia is opening up to me, but there are many people that don't want me to go. It didn't say the Holy Spirit. It said there are many adversaries. So the adversaries don't stop you from going, but the Holy Spirit does. Even with adversaries, your call is still potent. With enemies, you still are called to do the job. If people don't like you, you still are called to do the job. It's not a personality conflict contest. It's not congeniality. They may not like you, but, but if God sends you to do something, he makes a way for you to do it. And so much of what we do in the kingdom of God is built around personality. I think I like him. I think I like her so I can listen to them. What if you, if they aren't likable, but the word that they speak is truth and deliverance? Some of the people in the body of Christ that got on my nerve the worst were the most powerful. And I didn't think they were altogether friendly. 
But God didn't send them to be my friend. He sent them to get a word to me. We ought to know the difference. Amen? Let's return to Acts 16 and 7. Hope you still got your Bibles turned there. They tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them to go there. After the attempt to go to Asia, Paul sought to go north to Bithynia, but was prevented again. So they came down to Troas. Everybody say they came to Troas. In Troas is where the will of God for Paul in this instant became clear. Sometimes God's no is directional. Meaning that his no is leading you somewhere else. No, don't go there. No, don't go there. Troas, nothing. Well, that's where you're supposed to be. Now, there is nothing else really overly significant about Troas except some of the events that happened there that brought note because transition and the, the, the directional no's landed them in Troas because something else had to open up. At a place you didn't desire to go. At a place you didn't want to go first or second. Troas was third. So today I want to ask you, what is your Troas? Did you get there because there was somebody you, some place you wanted to go first? And then you couldn't go there, you couldn't go to the next place second. So what is your Troas? It might be right where you are. This is your Troas. This is where God has positioned you to leverage you and to springboard you into something else. It may not be the greatest choice or the glorious choice, but it's the right choice and it's in the plan of God for you. Are you there? Does that make sense? You, my dear friends, are in your Troas. You're in your transitional place. The devil's yes comes to take you out of God's plan for your life. But God's no lands you in the center of his will. The devil's going to keep saying yes. Everything you want to do, yes. Ooh, yes. Make it exciting. Make it lustful. Make it nasty. <laughs> yes. Charles is the place you didn't intend to go, but the Holy Spirit wanted you to go. Paul didn't set out to go to Troas. Again, it was his third choice. But it was the Holy Spirit's plan to lead him there. Paul was responsive to the Holy Spirit. It didn't say he thought about it. He didn't say that he contemplated it. It didn't say he argued with God about it. He didn't say, but why do I need to go? He didn't put his hand on his hip. And sh he didn't shake his finger in God's face. Why, why do I need to go there? I've been called to preach. I've been anointed to preach. I met Jesus already. So, so why are you telling me what to do next? I, need, I know what I need. I'm led. Of, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I, 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 shut up and go. He knew what your pedigree was before you had it. He don't care. Because it's his program. And you ought to get glad when it's his program. Because his program is fruitful. You ought to remember that. God's program for your life is fruitful. He's not taking you from one desert experience until the next. That's of the enemy. God's plan for you is fruitful. Even if you get to a place that ain't producing because you are in the will of God, something in that desert place will have to sustain you until you get to your next. Are you there? How many of you ever get, got in a tight, slim place, but you made it through? Because God knew where you were at and he wasn't going to leave you starving in the desert. Hmm. We get nervous, but he's not going to leave you starving in the desert. Whew. My God. Here is 
the challenge and the tough part. Laying aside your will and accepting the will of God. If he could just get you past you, he could do something different in you. Get us past us and what we want to do. Let me say it this way. Paul was guided by hindrance. What? He was guided by hindrance. No hindrance. No hindrance. Okay, this is what I'm supposed to be. He was guided by hindrance. And the Holy Spirit wants to guide you by what it stops you from doing. It's guiding you through hindrance. Not allowing you to take yourself out. The Holy Spirit often guides as much by closing doors as he does by opening doors. No, that's not God. God wouldn't have closed that door. Maybe he needed to, to get you off center. To push you past the comfort zone. To push you out of the places that you used to being all the time. And every time you go there, you're looking for the same thing every time. And sometimes God has moved. It's not even anointed anymore. Somebody said, would people know in church if the anointing really left? Wow. Acts 16, 9 through 10. Same chapter. These are basically the only three scriptures. Acts 16, 9 through 10. When you have it, say amen. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. It's considered in scripture as the Macedonian call. Come over in Macedonia and help us. It really, they said it might have been an angel, but it was the Holy Spirit evidencing the will of God. Paul couldn't even rest at night because God would, raise, would, would send somebody to talk to him during his night season. Come over in Macedonia and help us. What did they need? They needed the help that only Paul could bring, the gospel, the good news. Come on. That's what he had. He is full of the Holy Spirit. So when he came, he brought his Jesus. He brought the power of the Holy Spirit with him. He brought miracle working power with him. They said, come on over to Macedonia and help us. But you can't help every place. Ooh. Some of you need to climb down off the cross. You're not Jesus. You're trying to help everybody do everything. And you can't help everybody. And after a while, they let you know you really didn't help me. Amen. Oh, come on, y'all. But you might well wake up and get with this. Amen. How many people have you helped over and over again until you got mad and stopped and said to yourself, who's the fool here? Amen. Because if you keep helping people, they become dependent. And they won't help themselves. It's going on in Afghanistan. We fought a war for 20 years. Washington. And we thought we were training somebody. And as soon as the Americans left, the, 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 the other gang ran on in. And they were just like they were defenseless. Well, what did we teach you to shoot for? You know what happened? They got dependent. They always going to be here. Every time we get in trouble, uh, 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 help. And here we come running. And people might not like it and we may think it's, oh, it's just so awful. It's so awful. It's been 20 years. It has affected your pocket to the tune of $2 trillion. Y'all don't even know what $2 trillion could possibly look like. All right, I'm out of Washington now. Here is that reading some more. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately, immediately means what? Right immediately, right now. 
We sought to go to Macedonia. We had marching orders. That's how quick God wants you to respond. Concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Concluding that the Lord had called. Here it is. A man appeared to, to Paul in the night in Troas. God made Paul's direction clear. In a vision, Paul was told to go to Macedonia. This moved Paul and his missionary team from the continent of Asia Minor and, and Ephesus to Macedonia, to the continent of Europe. God positioned Paul and Troas to spread the word to Europe. God, Paul didn't have the vision until he got to Troas. He wouldn't have gotten it in Ephesus and he wouldn't have gotten it in Bithynia because those were the places he wanted to go. But he got it in Troas because that's where God wanted him at so he could talk to him there. Sometimes where you want to go is not where God wants to talk to you. You have to get to where you can hear his voice. That ain't it. That ain't it. There it is right there. But it don't look like nothing, but that's where he wants you. It's not my first, second. It's the third choice. And I think it was incidental. They couldn't go one place. They couldn't go another. They kept walking until they ended up in Troas. And for some reason, they stopped if it was nothing just to get some water. And that's where he fell asleep and had a dream. And a man in his Macedonian call, in his vision, said, come on over to Macedonia and help us. You won't get the call till you're in the right position. And you keep wondering, what's wrong? What's wrong? Where are you? Where you at? How did you get there? Well, I decided it, it looked like I weighed the odds, Pastor, and this looked like a good move. Well, you missed it by the, the letter O. You, you, a good move ain't necessarily a God move. Ooh. <laughs> How many of you know I'm really right? Just slip your hand up just slightly. Don't, it don't have to go way up high. I'm helping somebody right now in this room and in this audience. I'm helping you right now. So God positioned Paul in Troas to spread the word to Europe. The wisdom and greatness of God's plan was beginning to unfold. Paul wanted to reach a few cities, but God wanted to give him a continent. He wanted Ephesus and Bithyn uh, Bithynia, but God wanted to give him the whole continent of Europe. But that wasn't the whole purpose. Because Paul couldn't go to every place in Europe. But along the way, down in Troas, Paul took a partial team. And the Bible says, and in, in history it says, in Troas, Paul picked up Luke. What? He picked up Luke. Luke? Yes, Luke. Maybe as his physician. Maybe as part of a team. And it said, and they all left to go to Macedonia. Why was Luke crucial? Because Luke wrote the gospel of Luke. And then the book that records what happened to Paul was written by Luke. Luke wrote Acts. It happened at Troas. Not at Ephesus. Not at Bithynia. But at Troas, he hooked up with Luke, and Luke whipped out his pen with, 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 with a doctor's diagnostic eye and started writing. 
Everything that he saw, everything that he heard, and because of him, we, he, he gave rise to everything that Paul did so Paul could write the better part of the New Testament. You need your Troas. Because sometimes you're settling for a city when God wants to give you a continent. Ooh, you want to go this place, but you'll only be fruitful in that place for a minute. But God said, I want to bless generations. And we're sitting here today reading about it is because Paul went to Troas and picked up Luke. And Luke gave us Acts. And Luke gave us the book of Luke, which recorded the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Acts is really an extension of Luke. It really is the fifth gospel. And it became the Acts of the Apostles. What Luke said was activated in Acts. We don't know anything about the Holy Spirit until Luke wrote about it. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, right, Luke. They were all one accord in one place, right, Luke. They were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Write it, Luke. Yes. Yes. And they all went together. The Bible says immediately we sought to go. Everybody went. Everybody went together. In summary, God wanted to give Paul a continent to give him a personal doctor and to give us a man whom God would use to write the New Testament. That's why you may want to go to Ephesus, but that's not the plan. You may want to go to Bithynia, but that's not the plan. But little old Troas is where you have a vision of what God wants next. What's your Troas? Are you there? When the Holy Spirit says no, there is a bigger yes coming. Wait on it. This yes spells out God's ultimate plan. Do not be afraid of the no from God. Be afraid to disobey. Don't be afraid of the no. Be afraid to disobey. Blessings to you today. Amen. Father, we thank you. And we bless you. And we give you the glory. And we thank you for a simple message that shows how you operate. What your will is and what your way is. Help us to listen and to respond to your will for our lives. Help us. If you are in this room, while every head is bowed and believers are praying, Trust God for what you're sensing he's doing in your heart. If you have not made a choice for the Lord Jesus Christ, you can do that today. So I'm going to do all of the calls at one time to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. To come into the house of God. Maybe you've been out for a while. You need to be connected to a place where there is solid worship, teaching. Somebody explains scripture for scripture what God is doing, how he's doing it, and what to expect. If I'm talking to you for call number one to be saved, give your life to the Lord, call number two to become a part of the house, 
So, Pastor, I believe the report. If I'm talking to you for either one of those, just slip up a hand and say, say, that's me. I want to be a part. I'm talking to somebody in this room. Thank you, Lord. Their call is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And that's for anybody that's not filled. It's available to you. Don't be religious. Be book. Be Bible. Be filled wherein is excess. How do you know you feel? You speak. If that's you, lift up a hand and say, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, put your hands together. Give God a good praise. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.